right, so this right here, this is the backbone of my entire content creation system, or rather my entire business. I use this system to manage all areas of my business, and it's also connected to all the other systems that I've built for my business, such as my broadcast system. The system handles all things, uh, brand deals, sponsorships, and content creation processes. Index, this one manages all of my product development and payments this one will obviously manages all of my finances protocol is essentially the backbone this handles all of the tasks and projects and departments relating to all these other areas of my business. So if you look closely here on the department sections, you'll see that there is a department for operations under the one for sales and acquisition, product development, content creation, finance, and customer support. So if you read between the lines, every single one of these departments is essentially every single one of these systems, only that this one has two systems in one. Like I said, broadcast has content creation and sponsorship management. Index has product development, but it also has customer reviews and uh, customer support. All of these systems actually work together as one unit. However, today I'm not going to go in depth with the broadcast system, the index system, nor the payment system. I have videos that go over all these systems individually. So if you want to check those out, I'll leave those in the description below. I created the system so that I can find a way to track all the things that I'm doing and put them together in one list so that I can actually do them without going crazy. Because when you're running and operating a creative business or whatever business it is, and you have all these, uh, you have like a big fat list of things you need to do, but you don't know where to start or how to start or what to even do. If you look at all the cards inside the departments, you'll notice that they all have a few things. The first one is tasks. Essentially, this tells you how many tasks have been completed that live within this department. So the operations department has three out of four tasks that have been completed. And then you can also see that being reflected in the percentage here in the progress bar. There's a notification right here that's outlined in red that says needs attention. You'll only see the needs attention notification when there are tasks that haven't been completed inside of the department. So if you look at this one, the finance one, this one says it's up to date because it doesn't have any tasks that need to be done because every single one of the tasks inside of this department have all been finished. And then it's also showing the amount of time that you've invested within this department itself. So this system will also track the amount of time it takes you to complete tasks. That's essentially what this is saying. It's saying that among the three tasks that you have inside of this department, it has taken you 12 minutes to complete each and every single one of them. Underneath the departments, you will see your projects. So if you want to start a new project, you can just go to pending, add a new page, and let's say that this project, we want to name this home office setup. And you'll notice that here we have a tab for all of your tasks. And then here you'll also see all the tasks relating to this project. So you'll be able to add new tasks right here. But I will show you that in just a minute. Now underneath your projects, you have your tasks, I created a bunch of tabs here just so that I can display specific tasks without having to see everything that's going on within the business because why I, there's no reason for me to look at all of my completed tasks if they're completed right but i do want to reference them in the future in the event that i want to look at what i did or how long it took me to complete this task so on and so forth there are a bunch of different reasons why you want to look at your completed tasks but usually they just live in an archive however i don't want to hide them completely because if i ever need to reference them or i accidentally completed a task and then i forgot to press undo then I can always go back here, look for it, and then uh, revert it to its original state and then continue working on it. So start from the beginning. The inbox, this section has absolutely no other purpose than to brain dump everything that's in your brain. It does not require any sort of organization. The first step to releasing overwhelm is to brain dump everything that you have in your mind onto here, and then you will organize it. I'm actually going to use this home office setup as the example. So I am going to remove these department and I'm going to change it to operations. And you can either set the home office tasks right here, or you can just go to the project itself and put them on the to do. But for the sake of this example, to also show you how this area works, I'm just going to uh, write them out on here. Now, this is where 
things are going to start moving. Now let's add another task. Let's go over to our brand deals system. We'll go to the pipeline and I'm going to choose this one that's in the proposal stage. So Sony X sequences, I'm going to add a new task here. And for this task, I am going to title this send proposal to Sony. And now if I go back to protocol, you'll see that the task is now right here, send proposal to Sony. So now we've got six tasks, four relating to operations, one relating to customer support, and another one relating to sales and acquisition. So what's the next step? Now that I have emptied my brain into the inbox, in order to organize and move these around, you have to either select a project or a due date. So if I want to send a proposal to Sony today, then I'll just do today. So I'll select today, and then that will move my task from the inbox tab to today. Now you'll see that the task is right here. I'm gonna do the same thing with replying to Sally. So I'm gonna to choose today, set up lighting by desk, all this stuff. I'm going to do these tomorrow. So I'm just gonna to do tomorrow. This one I'm gonna to do tomorrow. This one I'm gonna to do tomorrow. And then this one will be doing this one tomorrow. Now, if you go over to the upcoming tab, you'll see all of our tasks right here that are due tomorrow. And since all of these tasks are related to the home office project, the one thing I need to do now is go over to the project here and add the home office project. So select your project and then you'll notice that at the bottom right corner of the property, you'll see that there is a little circle and drag it all the way down to the last task. And then that will connect the project to all of these tasks. Now, let's say that you have more tasks on your upcoming tab, and they're not related to the home office setup. So let's go over to our index dashboard and go over to the product and add a new task right here. So if I go over to my protocol dashboard now, you'll see that the send email blast to email list task is right here. And this task is not related to any project whatsoever. So now let's say a day went by and today is tomorrow. So I'm going to change the due date of all of these tasks to today, just so that I can better illustrate this example. So now today you have this laundry list of tasks that you need to get done. What do I choose to do first? So first and foremost, the task manager will automatically sort your tasks by urgency. It'll organize them from the highest urgency to the lowest urgency, as you can clearly see right here. So if I want to start working on my setup, let's say that I already bought the desk. I'm not even tracking that. Let's just get that out of the way, whatever. Now I need to set up the lighting. This is something that will take me a bit of time. And this is something that I want to track. What I'll do is I'll go over to the time entries here and I will start the time entry. Why do you even want to track the time it takes for you to complete a task in the first place? If you don't track, you don't care. What's crazy about tracking the amount of time it takes for you to complete a task is simply because it will you will kind of subconsciously play this game in your head where it almost makes it feel like you're in some sort of competition. What's crazy is that when you don't track the time it takes for you to complete a task, you can spend hours doing something that could have taken you 15 minutes to complete because you procrastinate, you get distracted. But when you have something that's actively tracking the time it takes for you to complete something that will put you in this mindset where you need to finish this as soon as possible, right? You're trying to get the lowest amount of time possible. It's kind of like a weird thing that happens in your brain. It's like when you turn on the camera and then you start talking to the camera and suddenly you have like this new voice because you know you're recording the tonality, the delivery, all the things you say, they sound different to how you usually speak because you've put yourself in an environment that forces you to behave differently. And that is the exact same thing that happens when you track the time it takes for you to complete a task. When you track the time it takes for you to complete a task, that alone will put you in this mindset where you need to try to finish this as soon as possible because the time is running. Now, if you look closely on the task itself, you'll notice that there is a red play icon that's being displayed underneath the activity property here. And you'll also see it on the activity property inside of the time entry as well. This indicates that you're currently working on this particular task. So let's say that you now finish setting up the lighting. Let's see how long that took. It took us four minutes to complete. If I'm done with the task, why is the task still here? This check icon here does not indicate that the task has been completed. The reason I did it this way is because let's say that you were now just setting up the lighting, but you, I don't know, your your wife made you lunch or something like that. You're going to go to to lunch and you didn't get to finish this. Well, the task is not done, but you did finish 
the current session of this task. Therefore, when you come back, you can add a new time entry and then you can title this session two. And then you can now also start tracking this time as well. And now you'll notice the exact same thing. The current active time entry is the session two time entry that you now just created. The activity on this task is now set to play because you're currently working on this task. And you'll also notice that the red play icon is right here next to the duration of the task. All right. So once you finish this, let's say that you now completed this whole thing, and now it took you a total of five minutes, which is probably unrealistic, but for the sake of this example, please bear with me. You will now go over to your status icon here, or you can just go over to the status up here on the top right corner and set this to done, right? You can either do that right here, or you can just uh, check it off right there, and then that will remove it from your today's tab because it's now completed. So now you'll see that task on the completed tab right here for you to reference if you ever need to. However, the completed tab will only show you the tasks you've completed throughout this week alone, because over time, you will complete a lot of tasks. And this is going to get loaded with a lot of tasks. So I created a filter here that will only show the tasks that are uh, relative to this particular week. So everything you did this week will be shown on here. If it's past this week, then it's going to just be empty because you don't want this to be overloaded with a lot of stuff. If you actually want to access all of your completed tasks, you can always go to the core database and then unfilter everything and then see everything on there and sort it by um, the due date. Another cool thing about this task management system is that you can actually create subtasks and then the system itself is so smart that it can add the amount of time it took to complete the subtasks and then the total amount of time it took to complete the subtasks will be added to the parent task. So for this, I'm going to choose the set up the stream deck task that I've got right here. Managing subtasks works differently than managing parent tasks because subtasks, the time it takes to complete each and every single one of these are going to be added to the parent task. So the parent task is not the task that you work on. You actually work on the tasks that live underneath the parent task. Therefore, if I want to start working on the stream deck, I want to start setting up the stream deck, all I have to do is go to the first subtask or whichever one of the subtasks and then start working on this one. I now just completed every single one of the subtasks. And if you look closely, the parent task is going to display the amount of time it took to complete all of the tasks that live underneath the subtask. That is how the subtask system actually works. So you will now go ahead and complete every single one of these. And last but certainly not least, you've got your SOPs. I cannot stress how important SOPs are for not only yourself, but also for your team. If you're currently in a position where you've hired and outsourced uh, your content to other people. SOPs are essentially all of your internal documentation that shows how to run and operate your business. Simply put, if you have a specific way to color grade your videos, then you will create an SOP for that specific task. And then this is going to teach the person you delegate this task to how to perform the task the same way you've been doing it throughout all these years. So if John is now in charge of color grading all of your videos, then he is now responsible for this SOP. So not only do you delegate the task, but you also delegate the responsibility of this task. If John starts changing the way you guys color grade your videos, it's up to him now to record the new process instead of you. Therefore, on the responsible property here, you're going to choose John. So whenever you set the status to needs review, then this means that John is now going to review this task. He's going to write or edit this task. Or if the old process is now outdated, what you want to do is you're going to set this to outdated. And now it's up to John to update it again and add the new documentation, the new videos, because you can also embed Loom videos on here to show how to go through the entire thing in a video format. Recording SOPs is single-handedly one of the most important and most positive ROI activities you can do in your business. Because if John used to be the one that was in charge of color grading, but now he's the creative director of the business, then he doesn't have time to color grade the videos anymore because he has other responsibilities within the business. Therefore, that means that whatever he used to do that training will be funneled down to the next person who's going to be in charge of the color grading process. And this applies to everything else, editors, 
thumbnail designers, script writers. But if you're a solo creator, then that means that you are the one responsible for absolutely everything in the business. And then over time, you will start delegating these responsibilities to other team members, and then they will be in charge of updating all of these SOPs on their own, so on and so forth. And that is how you kind of like scale the business, right? I just hit myself. Anyway, if you want access to the system, I'll go ahead and leave a link to that down below in the description. I'll also leave it in the pinned comments as well. So with that being said, I'll talk to you on the next one.